This dome has a chandelier hanging and it's 1,200 pounds. You will hear Turkey, you will hear Indonesia, you will hear Italy, you will hear Spain. And this baby chandelier is only 600 pounds. And our chandeliers are gold plated and they flew all the way from Alexandria. We have about 20,000 pieces of gold leaf up there painted with gold paint. The wording on the top are the first 10 ayahs of Surat Al Mu'minun made from fine mahogany wood that came all the way from Indonesia. So that artwork up there. It's Hand drawn, hand drawn by a non-Muslim. Even the Quran, the yes. eyes of the Quran written, sure. she doesn't even know what she was drawing. She told me, I don't know what I'm drawing, but I know it's beautiful. We're standing on fine Turkish carpeting with a density of 1.1 million points. When we installed it, it was the densest in the United States. Right. So we have a gym, we have a gathering area, we have an outdoor patio. The schools used to be enough for our community until right. this big, beautiful masjid came. And now we have people coming in from all over the states and some people coming from overseas to join this community. We had moms doing windows, cleaning windows. Really? We, if you build for a thousand, you'll have two thousand coming. If you build for two thousand, you'll have three thousand coming. We have many of our students that go off to college, come back here and get married here and live here. This room, sister, I so Fatuma interfaith room. Yes. So uh, what is here? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Al Huda Foundation. We call this facility AICI, which is Al Huda Islamic Center of Indiana. We opened our doors in 2022. This is the dream that was finally realized after so many years of being in warehouses and being in very small building. Finally, our dream came true with this 40,000 square foot structure. Originally, this land was purchased by Al Huda Foundation and our masjid was part of the school that's outside next door. That building was our school and our masjid and our everything. As the community got larger and larger and larger, we needed more permanent solution. Our schools was getting larger and the masjid was not fitting anymore, so this dream had to happen. It took four years of designing and planning and fundraising and alhamdulillah when the project was completed it cost 8.8 .8 million dollars and this is all gathered through donations from community members and kind souls from around the world alhamdulillah concept of design was to stay true to what a masjid looks like many masjids in america are usually office buildings and they don't look anything or resemble like a masjid so alhamdulillah we were able to bring that to our community to our children who have never seen a traditional masjid maybe keep it true to what a masjid looks like and also incorporate modern design. One thing that we always get when people come visit our masjid, how calming it is and how relaxing it is. And that's the very smart use of the bright colors, the open spaces. When the builder was coming up with the concept of design, with the work of the architectures, we wanted to bring the best of the masjid we saw around the world. So you might find hints of masjid. Arches are from the Cologne Mosque in Germany. This Ooh. is the inspiration for it. The openness and the color the vivid colors are from the Sheikh Zayed Mosque in Abu Dhabi, the, the whiteness and the openness. Absolutely. Uh, we'll see chandeliers that resemble the Masjid al Nabawi. Yes. We find bits and pieces from all over the world, which comes perfectly because our community is from all over the world. You will hear Turkey, you will hear Indonesia, you will hear Italy, you will hear Spain. All these resemble our vast and diverse community. And do you know how many people can pray here in total? When we go on the musalla, we'll let you know exactly. Okay. First salah we ever had, taraweeh. I remember people were outside here as well. Really? The, there was still some, some construction happening in there, so we were at full capacity and it was COVID, so we had to have some spacing. Yes. But I remember with my rug praying out here as well. Subhan, so can we yes. do a little tour of we'll the beautiful masjid? do a little tour. Beautiful masjid. The way that this, the entrance of the musalla was designed is it has five entrances, so really? people don't get funneled in or out, which oh. is, imagine during Jum'ah prayer how, how crazy it could be, people trying to get in and people trying to get out. Absolutely. We also have the way that designed, the, the, the shoe rack area is designed to also help people spread out opposed to funnel in. And so, these are all lockers for what exactly? Those are for shoes and personal property and also right. we have open open cubbies for that. This is the men's prayer area. When it's not very busy, the women do have a section in the back to pray. Right. But during Jum'a prayer or Taraweeh, when it's very, very busy, the women have an upstairs mezzanine all to themselves. MashaAllah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <laughs> So 
So Sister Judy, tell us about beautiful design. So this is our Thank main you. musalla and the fire marshal estimated 1,116 worshippers can be here at once. I can see the beauty, the openness, the sereneness of this room, really what makes it very, very, very special. Yes, mashallah, it left me speechless when I entered, subhanAllah. Alhamdulillah, as you can see, we are blessed as women worshippers to also have a we call it the suite <laughs> upstairs, Mashallah. where we're able to enjoy, see, and actually be fully immense in everything that's happening in the main musalla. Between 15 and 1600 people in mm -hmm. total. Just we also inside. have a, a room that we call it the uh, babysitting room, or it's a room right. where mothers and uh, children under seven can pray in there. So we also have an additional room where we can uh, have a prayer for the younger kiddos. If you want to start in this room from the, da from the floor up, um, yeah. we're standing on fine Turkish carpeting with a density of 1.1 million points. So this Whoa. is... I'm going to say when we built it or when we installed it, it was the densest in the United States. It took so many professionals to come and try and, and put it down because it was so hard to work with because it's so, so, so dense. This is the densest yes. in the United States, subhanAllah. And it was imported all the way from Turkey. So a lot of uh, inspiration in this masjid from other Muslim countries and other masajid, mm -hmm. I mean, even in Europe uh, and Medina as well. So, so that must have taken a long time in planning and Yes, all it of took that, right? a lot of research. And since it was such a big project, we wanted to do it once and for all. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things took extra time with preparation and research to make sure we are doing the best thing that we can do um, for this community and not keep coming in to uh, do adjustments or, or, or do add-ons. Um, uh, other things from other countries, if you look up here at the main wall, we have the, the, the wording on the top are the first uh, ten ayahs of Surat al-Mu'minun. And it is uh, made from fine mahogany wood that came all the way from Indonesia. Allahu Akbar. It took 30 days to travel from Indonesia to Fishers, and we had a master calligrapher come from Chicago to assemble it. SubhanAllah. That, that is really amazing, mashallah. So, the, what wooden, was the, reason? the wooden yeah. stars you see on the walls, those were painted with a, a gold paint by members of our youth community. So, wow. when we have younger children come in, they feel like a part of them is in the masjid right now, and each one of them claims a certain star. And what are the ages? The ones who are painting were the ages of 7 to 15. From the beginning, they feel that yes. they have ownership yes. in the masjid. Uh, um, it is, it's not only paid by the majority of the community, also the majority community had something to do with it. I came upon yes. this project, it was coming close to when we were about to open, and we wanted to finish quickly with the lowest cost possible. Right. So we called upon the community to come in and help. So we were a group about of 15 moms who would drop off our kids at school and come here. And right. uh, we would go up the scaffolding up there and, and do the gold leaf paper up there on the ceiling. Oh, really? We have about uh, 20,000 uh, pieces of gold leaf up there. Uh, 20,000 We also, uh, we, I was part of the group also who hand drew the stencils of the woodwork that goes around. Oh, sure. And those were all hand drawn and a carpenter was behind us hand cutting and sticking them on. So it was a race to finish by the end of the school year. And we also wanted to finish with the lowest cost possible. We called each other the golden girls because we would come <laughs> and do the gold leaf up there. Absolutely. I mean, you say that you had a race to finish, but I mean, so much, uh, I don't think there was a race because there's so much effort that the masjid, the people, yes. the community took to, as you mentioned, uh, it came from Indonesia, the brother from Chicago, yes. the calligrapher. And yes, so it everything. was definitely a group effort. And Alhamdulillah, by the grace of God, there was barakah and blessing in our time and effort that we were able to finish when we wanted to finish at the lowest cost possible. We had moms doing windows, cleaning windows. Really? We had, um, uh, we, were, we were all over the place. She is- So that artwork up there yes. is- it's hand drawn, hand drawn by a non-Muslim. Even the Quran, the yes. ayahs of the Quran written, um, she was drawing them out of following a reference. 
So she doesn't even know what she was drawing. She wow. said, she told me, I don't know what I'm drawing, but I know it's beautiful. So, the ayahs on the uh, top of the dome are uh, Surat al-Ikhlas, and they're drawn with 24 karat gold paint. In the middle of the... Mm -hmm that we see up there. It's so befitting for the foundation of our aqidah, our belief, to be in the middle of our musallah. I do feel that uh, Al-Huda Al Foundation really put a, a lot of effort on the design and the preserving the Islamic tradition. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, mostly other communities, they're just, okay, we got the money, let's just wrap it up and start praying. And, but here, there was yeah. a lot of emphasis on all the beauty and yes. the essence yes. of the Islamic arts. So it was an expensive project. So mm -hmm. we wanted to be done right. We wanted to be in a way where our community members and our kids will be proud of our masjid. That's why we would try not to cut any corners. We didn't want to revisit this project every five years. Try mm -hmm. to do it once and for all, beautiful. Yeah. No expenses were cut, but also any time we could bring in someone who volunteered, mm -hmm. someone was in there to do it. The focus was for the children and the next generation to feel proud and confident and happy about being a Muslim. And, yes. And, and just like you mentioned earlier, they're leaving for college or for something else, but they come back yes. to this community. So Alhamdulillah, they do. And they, they do feel like this masjid is not only a place where they uh, worship and see their friends, it's also a place where we have people come in from out of town and say, can I bring in my uh, family or my boss who wants to do a tour of this masjid? Really? They feel like it's so, they're so proud of this building and its beauty and its sereneness itself, I feel like is a source of dawah. We have people come in from church groups and from uh, retirement homes, and the number one thing they say is they feel this calmness and sereneness when they come in. They always tell us, can we just come by and just hang out? Like, sure, you can come by and hang out. During Juma prayers, sometimes we find people clearly who are non-Muslim are in the back just sitting, listening, and, and just in, in, in taking in the beauty and the awe of this place. The place itself is doing dawah by itself without anybody saying anything. Yes, because yes, alhamdulillah. We have many non-Muslim neighbors around who uh, right. we try to purchase their property so we can have more property. And they said, nope, we're staying. We okay. get to look at this beautiful building. And alhamdulillah, <laughs> we have a good relationship with our community to help with the excessive parking issue we get during Jum'a ah prayers. We have three Jum'a ah prayers to able to fit our community. But still, the first is the, the busiest because it's usually during the lunch break. Mm -hmm. and and uh, the city of Fishers has worked with us to uh, let us use a uh, parking lot that they have behind this pond. So we can actually, it's called Launch Fishers. We can park there and we created a trail, a walk trail, to add parking spots for our community. Because we didn't want to oh, wow. park uh, in, in, like, in the streets, in the subdivisions of the neighborhoods, yeah. because that's normally what happens yes. in a masjid neighborhood. So the masjid created a trail for people to walk by the pond and park their cars. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. so That's creative. You come in and you have always someone from the masjid in, a red, in an orange vest either saying you can park or we're at full capacity. Right. So they go over there and this was due to our good relation with the city of Fishers yes. that they provided this for us so at no charge. Park your cars there and you can walk here. MashaAllah. And uh, that's really beautiful though, like uh, was this location uh, near the pond, was it intentional that you wanted it near the water? Cause yeah, so this location <laughs> was purchased, yeah. um, I'm going to say over 10 years ago. Right. And due to the smaller community, we were not able to um, uh, fu fully utilize it. So right. that's why we only had the school next door and the musalla was part of that school. Okay. But alhamdulillah, uh, they had enough uh, vision for the future to build something so beautiful and so serene. Yes. And uh, uh, we're able to develop it into what we want it to be. And this is the trail that you were yes. talking about? This is the trail that they made back, um, uh, uh, that goes all the way back. And we always try to advertise to our community members that even if you have a spot in the parking lot here, go park there so you can get more edged for every step you <laughs> take to walk to the message. <laughs> that's, uh, Sometimes that's you saw so people true. running <laughs> because they're late, but, <laughs> but still, they're getting the extra edge. What makes our masjid a masjid is the domes and the minarets. So yes. we have the two tall minarets and we have three 
three domes, a large dome and two smaller domes. Mm -hmm. So this dome um, has a chandelier hanging and it's a 1,200 pounds chandelier. Oh my God. Hanging God, from, this, uh, from this dome. I don't like to pray underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> May Allah protect us all. I mean, I mean. Yes. So these dome, uh, these chandeliers were inspired by the uh, uh, the ones in Masjid al Nabawi in Saudi Arabia. Yes. And they were hand -crafted crafts in Alexandria, Egypt. Allah Hukum. And they were, they were brought over. SubhanAllah, all the Muslim countries, Egypt, Turkey, Indonesia, they have all played a part. All yes. of them are here. Yes, even yeah. non-Islamic countries like the marble is yes. from Spain. We do have a history yes. there, mashallah. So. <laughs> yes. um, uh, the porcelain uh, is from Italy. It's all over. It talks about where we're from and where we're going and where we're spread around the world. Wow. I mentioned there are five entrances to come into the masjid. Yes. We we also have a emergency exit that way and another emergency exit that way but also uh, through that door you can go to the preparation room for the de deceased alhamdulillah we are able to have that in-house so we have a room for pre preparing the deceased and we are for the family members are able to stay in the community when their loved ones passed away we do yes. the salah and we have an islamic cemetery about 10 minutes away if you go out this way al huda foundation has several services for the community not only the muslim community we have a food pantry that's right. available uh, twice uh, a month and it's open to all members whether Muslim or non-Muslim and they just drive up with their car and they fill out a form of what they may need if they have babies if they have females males whatever they may need and we uh, are able to supply them the food pantry is replenished by Al Huda Foundation by donations from the community uh, right. Muslim and non-Muslim organizations as well subhanallah it's a uh, it's a lot we mashallah. also do protein as well. Protein? Yeah, we do meat and chicken as well. Oh, mashallah. To all the people who are in need. Yes. And again, no questions asked. You don't have to be Muslim to be able to uh, be a part of the service. That's humanity. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Our facility is handicap accessible. Um, there is a ramp to go in from uh, this entrance. Uh, the only mm -hmm. time you would need to use stairs is to go up the women mezzanine, and that's why we have an elevator for that. Right. Oh, subhanAllah, these stairs. <laughs> We're, these are leading to the sisters yes. section, mashallah. So not many men get to come up here, <laughs> so it's a treat. <laughs> it's, it's a privilege. It is a privilege. <laughs> yes, mashallah. So when the women mashallah. from the elevator come up here, we have our right. own separate uh, shoe rack. And this is the wudu? This is the, no, this is the restroom. Okay, mashallah. The ablution room is back here. There is one for females and one for males. And this is the area, mashallah. When we opened our masjid, this was the number one selfie spot. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> this is very, mashallah, uh, I don't have words. What is that? Oh, okay, that's to open the tab, mashallah. Mm -hmm. Looks, uh, looks like it's some technology. <laughs> yes, uh, the reason why there's no stool here is because this is the handicap wash. Oh, so a wheelchair can be able to pull up. Oh, even thinking about the people with the disabilities, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, yes. I think the color scheme is very consistent everywhere, mashallah. Yes. The golden color. Oh, subhanAllah. The gold, the whites, and the blues. So this is the women's mezzanine. It can fit up to 403 worshippers. And mashallah. like I told you, they very are spacious. able to see, feel, hear everything going on in the main musallah. So the women in our community, alhamdulillah, are blessed to be such a cohesive part of the community. Um, yes, sister, I um, wanted to ask you about that, that usually masajid hide the sisters somewhere in the corner, but uh, mashallah. No, uh, our, uh, the sisters yeah. of our community are very outspoken. Mashallah. Our board of directors has two females on it. It's not just uh, behind the scenes. They're the forefront runners of the show. Our community realizes the importance of the female character and what they contribute to the generations. The way we think differently actually complements the way the men think. So we're able to solve problems quicker and, and more efficiently. So. Absolutely, mashallah. Mashallah, the sister section is really massive and they have a beautiful view of the whole uh, space and also the pond. Since this room is open to the main uh, musalla, right. you can imagine how echo will travel. So if we made a rule, if your child is seven years or younger, then they need to be downstairs in the, the women and children's room. Right. And also because 
there is glass and we want the, the moms to be able to focus on their prayer. They're yeah. not always worried about their kid being too close to the glass or, oh, or, yes. <laughs> or, 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 or doing something they shouldn't this be doing. Sister is talking about this glass. <laughs> they are always trying to jump over it. So the mothers can't focus or yes. fathers even. <laughs> yeah, so we <laughs> like to give them peace of mind yes. and let them enjoy their experience. Absolutely. A beautiful view of the dome and the minar from here. A couple of features we have, um, we have a drop-down screen that comes down from there. We right. use that for presentations oh, really? and when we do movie nights for the kids. Every once in a while when we find a movie that's good enough <laughs> for all generations to watch, yeah. they bring in their sleeping bags and we do a oh, movie night God. for them. We're trying to make our, our, our youth and our kids do everything everyone else is doing in a halal structure, oh, in sure. a structure where the parents feel comfortable that they know what their kids watching, what their kids doing. Other activities we're doing with our kids is we do soccer, we do taekwondo, we do basketball. Right now for the females, pickleball oh, is starting sure. in 30 minutes. We also have badminton once a week. We also have Zumba classes for oh, our women. Wow. So uh, even our, our, our women who are modest and would like to participate in all these activities, we've alhamdulillah able to give them that opportunity. Can you open a masjid in Colorado, inshallah? <laughs> Do you have, well, when we built in 2022, it cost 8.8. .8. I think oh. now with the prices, um, it's gone up so, 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 so much. Yeah, it must be 16 million now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. The, so and Colorado I, is even more expensive. <laughs> more expensive. We need to expand for our schools as well right now. And right. that's why we're purchasing a land that's on the border of Fishers and Noblesville, just because Fishers is so saturated at this point yeah because of the lack of space in our current school we are at full mm -hmm. capacity we have about 400 students and we are at full capacity some of the community members who are here or are planning to move here are changing their minds because they want to move where there's a masjid and an Islamic school and when the right. Islamic school uh, does not have capacity for them they are unfortunately have to go somewhere else yeah we have a beautiful masjid that's bringing people in and a full capacity school that's pushing people out so that's why <laughs> It's very important for us to build this school so it can keep uh, keep all of our community members and also bring in more. Yeah, mashallah, it's a cash 22 situation, yes. but uh, already serving oh, so cool. many people. This is the kids room, we call it. Oh, okay, um, this is the very important room in the masjid for yes. uh, struggling parents. Even, even if you're a parent here with your child, you still have a state-of-the-art view equipment so you can hear, see everything that's going in the main musallah. So you're not, even, even if you're here, you're not excluded from the, from the main congregation. This room also, we do tahfiz classes in it. We also do youth gatherings. We have youth gatherings for boys separate and we have for girls. And they all have either with the imam or with the social workers, leaders, trying to keep all of our kids involved. This room, sister, I saw Fatuma interfaith room. Yes. So uh, what is here? Fatuma was a member of our community who was one of the original stars of interfaith that would go out into the community and have presentations for churches, other schools to explain Islam and answer their questions. She was one of the originals. Unfortunately, she passed away at the age of 19. In so life, this really room uh, is continuing in her name, in her legacy. And uh, inshallah, it will be a sadaqa jariya for her. The stars of Al Huda, the, the, our youth that do the presentations till this day, still continue what he, she and her group of friends started. To honor her. Mashallah, 19 years old. She she passed away unfortunately, but uh, Mashallah, she she did such good work in such a yes, young age. Yes. So people May who Allah know her, her or so. don't know her know of her, and uh, Alhamdulillah, Mashallah. we were able to keep her uh, example uh, present with our youth, and everyone knows that this is something that she did, and her and her friends, and everyone else is contributing and co and, and continuing in that, Inshallah. So tell us, sister, what goes on over here? So the interfaith room, from its name, we held a lot of the interfaith gatherings. I think it's mostly once a month. We have presentations for church groups, office groups, uh, political leaders to talk about what we are as a community and trying to express Islam to them. The major taking point we get from all of these meetings is how much they leave realizing that we are more alike than 
different mm. and they're always surprised and at awe that they have we have so much more in like than they ever thought and the only reason that they realize this is because we open this channel of communication with them. Communication is the number one aspect that draws people in because we are always open to that. People come walk off the street and say, can we attend your, your service, our Friday service? And we, of course, allow that. And alhamdulillah, every once in a while during Jum'ah prayer, we hear that someone is, is, is reverting to Islam and we hear the takbirs. And, and this is all due to the open communication. And alhamdulillah, uh, the majority of our members of our community are, are welcoming and represent Islam in a welcoming way. And uh, that has helped also grow our community amongst non-Muslims that have chosen to join Islam. Yeah, it seems like interfaith uh, is a big part of Al-Huda Foundation's yes. uh, activities. Like I said, it's been going on for uh, 10 plus years and uh, we have no reason to stop. I think what makes our interfaith so uh, strong is because it's led by our youth. So when you oh, have right. members of a church coming, we have our Al-Huda Al stars who are middle schoolers and high schoolers are the ones presenting our Islam, presenting our deen so through slideshows and they answer questions. So this is also, other than being a service to the community, we're actually empowering our children to be able to express Islam confidently and know their facts. So wherever they may go in the future, that they know how to represent and explain Islam to the best of their abilities. SubhanAllah, that is truly amazing because mostly it's just children struggling with their uh, Muslim identity, but here they are actually doing the dawa themselves, yes. taking the lead yes. role. Knowing their facts, knowing uh, why we do certain things, what are the ayahs, what, are, what is the hadith that backs up the subject they're talking about. With our kids, we're trying mostly to focus on what is true Islam and yes. take away a lot of our agendas of what was what we grew up with. Yeah. So a lot of things we grew up with is not true, true Islam. It's more traditions and more things passed by from generation to generation. We're teaching our kids to go back to the basics and find the fundamentals and find the proof behind the fundamentals so they're able to present Islam in the, the Hanif way. <laughs> We talked about there's three domes. We have the large dome in the musalla, mm -hmm. and this is the inside of one of the smaller domes. Right. And this baby chandelier is only 600 pounds. <laughs> 600 pounds, mashallah. And, and our chandeliers are gold plated, um, wow. and they flew all the way from Alexandria to be here with us. SubhanAllah. And you can see the names As Salaam, Al Qaddus, names of Allah written mm -hmm. on the chandelier, SubhanAllah, Al Malik, all the beautiful names, and on the extended lights, there's uh, the Prophet's name, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a lot to take in, sister. It is, it is. <laughs> this masjid, mashallah. So, with the, one of the ways we were able to keep cost lower, I'm not going to say down, but lower, is many aspects of this masjid were donated by community members. So you can see in windows, there are plaques in uh, memory of a deceased. Furniture was donated by a family member of a deceased as well. Every aspect had someone contribute to that order to be able to keep it low in cost. So what is uh, the reason of this space? We call it the meet and greet area. We have this is rare, sister. I, I never saw a place for yes, uh, people to sit when you, um, <laughs> on such a large scale. If you go like in the middle of the day, you find sometimes people working on their laptops and doing some work here. It's right. like a library, but with more angels. <laughs> so <Subhanallah. laughs> this is what they do. Um, we Mashallah. have people having meetings. You can meet with, your, uh, with the Imam and discuss with him. So there are many right. opportunities for us to meet and greet. During Jum'ah prayer, this is basically our, the biggest social aspect of the week. So either you're coming in from a prayer or leaving from a prayer, you gather together, you sit and talk. Every once in a while, we have uh, bake sales, we have small sales. So people will set right. up a table selling sweets or authentic meals. One of the uh, alhamdulillah blessings we have is to have our own in-house gym. Before we had a gym, we could only do away games, tournaments that happen in the, uh, in the area. Like in Cincinnati, there's the Islamic school tournaments. And uh, we have a team, and we, used to, we always go and compete over there. But now we also have an, a room for our kids to practice, our kids to uh, be able to be ready. Oh my God. 
Subhanallah. So this is a professional gym with triple layer flooring. So it's no expenses were, were, were cut here. We wanted a place for our, where our kids are proud to be and our kids are proud playing sports. So yeah. Alhamdulillah, we're able to give them this. The bleachers pull out and we can fit 145 spectators, which is great. Wow. Uh, also the observation area uh, helps with that so they can be able to, to view games and activities. During uh, festivals or like in the month of Ramadan, we have a big tarp that is pulled out on the floor to protect the flooring. And we can have about 350 people come in and have iftar here. We do private iftars, so a person can reserve the gym and do private iftars. And during the weekends, we do community iftars right. where we open, we we send out invitations to members, especially members who are a little less fortunate, and we're able to let them experience this and also have the enjoyment of iftar and taraweeh in the same place. What is uh, that noise uh, over there? Well, that, that's the AC. Okay. The AC today today is one of the, the hottest days of Indiana's history. Oh, so really? everything is working extra. We have two bathrooms in here, men and female. We also have a storage room. Right. We have an emergency exit that also leads out to the back patio. Our back patio is 28,000 square feet. It's also available for people. Some people rent it out and do special activities there. We also host the youth bonfire up here. Kids love it. We do it. Uh, we try to do it. Uh, let's say every couple of months right. and they have pizza and fire and it's and they just talk with whoever they want to talk they're the imam and oh, it also has a beautiful view of the pond and this is the trail that leads back to the parking as well there are different markings on the floor so it's not just basketball we do volleyball we do badminton and like i said pickleball is coming in soon pickleball is starting in yes, less than a, half an hour <laughs> it's a it's a new upcoming trend all yes. over the place and, and uh, sisters uh, i think they love it inshallah <laughs> they, they they do really do and especially because yeah. they're able to um yeah play sports in a conservative atmosphere where they don't feel comfortable being outside and doing that outdoors. Yes, absolutely. We have four offices here, um, therefore the Board of Trustees, Board of Directors, we have our in-house scholar Imam, uh, Sheikh Nasir Karimian, and we have our Quran leader, uh, Sheikh Qiyam, um, that does the Quran teachings in our masjid. The plan has been throughout the year is to always accommodate the need, the need, the need, the need. But after so many small fixes we realized once and for all we need something big to encompass bring together the whole community so when Whoa. we build this masjid we wanted to build something that will last us for years to come and for generations this Fishers is a great area we love it and there's no room to expand later on so we have to build it for once and inshallah it'll last for generations to come so mashallah this was a investment in the future so we try to use every single aspect of our masjid so it's beneficial for all the community. We hold nikah parties, we hold halaqas for boys and girls, we hold Quran tahfidh uh, gatherings, we also hold Arabic lessons. So we're trying to make it as useful for the whole community. Al Huda Foundation also has three schools. The first school was the one next door, and now alhamdulillah we have three campuses that are spread out uh, throughout Fishers. But even that, we are at full capacity, so now we are purchasing a new land to build a bigger school. The schools used to be enough for our community until right. this big, beautiful message came. Well, and sure. now we have people coming in from all over the states and some people coming from overseas to join this community. So this beautiful message has brought in so many more people from out of state and they want to join this community, they want to join the Islamic school, so now we have to build a bigger Islamic school to be able to fit this beautiful big community we have. Al Huda Foundation also has a Sunday school Right. But we have about 175 students that serve the community that are not in the Islamic school. So right. we try to cover all the children of the community one way or another. So even though you build such a huge masjid thinking that you might not want to expand it just like other masajid, but still it's short. There's always right? going to be shortage because yeah. alhamdulillah when you have a nice community, more people will come. Yes, so if sure. you build for a thousand, you'll have two thousand coming. If you build for two thousand, you'll have three thousand coming. So this is a good problem to have, the ever-growing sure. community. And alhamdulillah, our community here in Fishers, uh, we have many of our students that go off to college, 
come back here and get married here and live here. So our community keeps growing, growing, growing. Not all, not only people from out of state, our own community is, alhamdulillah, staying. We're planting our roots here. We have several yeah. other masajids in the area. We have one that's about 15 minutes away. We have in Carmel. We have, there are so many masajids everywhere, alhamdulillah, and I think all of them are at full capacity. So it's a good problem to have. <laughs> It has a story of where it came from and, and, and the family that donated has their own story to tell. For example, the furniture was a community member who passed too soon uh, due to an illness. His family wanted to give an opportunity for him to continue getting good deeds, uh, although of his... Yeah. Yes. yes. So uh, windows, doors, even like the conclaves, each one was sponsored by a family member to make it feel like this is part of them. And this is part of their family members' heritage and sadaqa jariya. And they're remembered. So you'd be sitting in this chair, see the plaque, you read Fatiha for this person. Masha. So this was something that was really, really personal to many of the community members. SubhanAllah. And uh, a few final words, sister, mm -hmm. for the viewers and the audience. So first of all, we would love you to come and visit. Our message is welcoming. Uh, we're open all five prayers. We always have activities going on for the kiddos. So even if you don't live so close, you can still manage to come and, and be part of our community. Alhamdulillah, we have good relations with the community around us, Muslim and non-Muslim. So we always do activities together. So anybody is welcome, Muslim or non-Muslim, of course. Our biggest thing, we built this beautiful masjid. We need, we like to maintain it, of course. The cost of maintaining this masjid is pretty pretty high so anything uh, that anyone could help contribute will always of course it's sadaqa jariya for them and it will uh, help generations to come for this masjid to stay at its best for the longest time period and like I mentioned a big beautiful masjid has, is drawing in more people and now the new need we have is the school this is another project that's very dear to the Al Huda Foundation for able to keep our youth in the area we need to be able to provide a, a, a school that would fit them so so this is another project that we're really, really interested in um, helping out is the purchasing of the new land. That would be great if anyone could uh, just take a look at our story and donate even one brick. That would, alhamdulillah, will be a sadaqa jariya. All right, sister. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair for the whole tour. Yeah.